This is the Real Estate Rookie Show number five. I'm Ashley Kerr, and I'm here with my co-host, Felipe Mejia, who's here to give us a full weather report from Daytona Beach, Florida. <laughs> I, I always get nervous about what you're going to say. I'm like, okay, how is she going to introduce? How are we going to play this out? I got to be ready. So I'm like looking around. Yeah, do you know the weather say? forecast? <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful out here. I actually... Uh, rented a small hotel room by the beach for this recording. I was super excited about it. Maybe, you know, got rid of the parrot. I have the <laughs> ocean behind me. It's 85 and sunny. It's a gorgeous day. But it's kind of sad, though, because there's no one on the beach uh, for good reason. But it is what it right. is. Right. That has to be weird to look at, though, just the, it's the empty really beach. Strange. Yeah. Yeah. How is your but, family uh, doing? Yeah, everyone is good. Um, we're like I said, like I said in the last show, we're out here on five acres in Daytona, Florida. My son's running around, getting tired, doing his thing. Uh, we yeah. bought him a small yeah. pool and a trampoline so that he can, you know, and enjoy enjoy the outside. So he's really loving that. How's your family, Ashley? How's everyone uh, up north? Good, good. I put my kids to work this weekend in a, a rehab unit. So my son, my six-year-old, he did great with a screwdriver. He took all the poles and the hinges off of kitchen cabinets for me. So that was great. I didn't have to do that. And he did it all. And I only had to make them pizza as payment. So yeah, good luck with that when they're good luck with that when they're teenagers. They're gonna be they're yeah. gonna be they're gonna be asking you for for a check. I can't wait till my son yeah. can help me with my rehabs though. So yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. So today's show is a lot of fun. We did the Facebook live again and we had on uh three investors who either just closed on a deal or are in the process of closing on a deal. And it's interesting to hear their perspective on why they're still going forward, even uh, with everything that's going on. And I love, uh, you know, their perseverance, their endurance, you know, they then they have great energy. Um, so the three we talked to today is Jeremy, Kristen, Kristen and Raphael. Yeah, they were really cool because they talked about how, like you said, perseverance, I think, seemed to be key, that they had to push through what was going on even more than you know, typically having to push through real estate investments and purchasing properties. Mm -hmm. Now you have this pandemic on top of that. So pushing through that. And then, you know, Jeremy talks about pushing through, making sure that the rehab is going to finish, getting everything done and, and getting a huge discount on his purchase price, uh, close to 20 grand, I believe. So that was really interesting. And these are not experienced investors who, you know, have gone through a crash before or have done this for years. Each of them only have two or three deals uh, under their belt or this closing might be their second or third. So um, I'm really excited to talk to them more. Uh, let's bring on uh, Jeremy, Kristen and Raphael. So today we're going to start out with Jeremy. What's up, man? How are you? You want to tell us a little bit about uh, where you're from and what you've invested in so far? I am out of Avon, Ohio, uh, west side of Cleveland, about half hour, 40 minutes west of Cleveland. Um, I am a educational aide for high school where I work with special needs and a full-time strength conditioning coach. Um, I have two investment properties, uh, a condo in Lakewood, and I just bought a single family home in Elyria, Ohio. Now, is the single family you just purchased during this whole pandemic thing and everything that's going on? Yeah, so I started in December looking for more uh, investment properties, making my offers, nothing was clicking. Um, and then this actually particular property, it's a two bedroom, one bath, 700 square foot um, with a 180 foot uh, or 180 square foot sunroom, enclosed sunroom off the back. And uh, the day I went to originally see it, it had gone contingent, but I'm like, I'm still going to go see it just in case, you know, you never know. So yeah. went, went and saw it. Um, I liked it, did a walkthrough, you know, crunched my own numbers and uh, came back and, you know, it was contingent. So I didn't bother with it, didn't even make a backup offer. And it came back on the market. And when it came back on the market, I immediately texted my agent. I was like, let's offer on this house. Um, the asking was $45,000. Um, it was sitting on the market for over a hundred days. And this was like, man, like two weeks before Corona happened and, uh, offered 35 on it. Um, the seller media was like, no problem, 35, but the seller lives overseas. So they wanted to use their, um, closing title company and everything. Cause they've done, you know, closing titles with them before. I'm like, fine, but I want 32,000 now. 
Um, I just finished Jay Scott's book on negotiating. So I was like, I learned through there. If they don't, they right. don't budget the original book, come back and keep going. Um, so they're like, yeah, no problem. 32 is fine. So then I'm like, okay, I might have even more wiggle room. 30. <laughs> Let me keep going. <laughs> exactly. So they're like, they're like, yeah, well, you know, 32 is fine. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, now I had like 30, 28 in my mind after inspection. So, cause my walkthrough, I mean, there was, you know, it's a, it's a rehab. So there's a foundation issue. Um, I only noticed the one wall. And so I started lining up on my inspections. Um, the first day of inspection, there was something that happened and it got delayed. And then we sit up the second time for inspection and it got delayed. So I had to, I had to use two extension periods for, uh, inspection. By this time they're like, they're kind of frustrated. And my agent's like, listen, they would rather stay in contract right now versus backing out. Um, Cause this is when Corona started happening. Um, so this is probably, I would say five days into everything where I finally got my inspection. Um, the report comes back and basically my inspector's like, listen, like three out of the four walls in the basement got, have problems. The sunroom in the back, the slab sloping towards the house. Um, there's plumbing issues like the kitchen sink. They ran the sink down into the slop sink and then had a pump, pump it out of the basement wall or out, out of the basement window, which I didn't notice at first. I just, that's not didn't normal. <laughs> yeah. Like, I guess that's normal for that rental. Um, so he's like, you need to call a plumber ASAP because that's going to be a big issue. So all the alarms start going off in my head. I'm like, I got to get out of this. So I, talk to my agent. I'm like, listen, I need to release her contract or I'm offering something like 20 grand for this house. And she just kind of laughed. She's like, yeah, you're not going to get that. So I'll send you the contract. I'm like, all right, cool. So an hour later, she calls me and she just like is laughing. She's like, oh my God, they took $20,000. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. She's like, they took 20 grand. I'm like, She's like, I never would have thought they would have taken $20,000. She's been doing this for you know, 15, 20 years, her and her husband. They have 60 rentals themselves. She's like, I want this for $20,000. <laughs> She's like, but you need to close like ASAP. And at that time, it was like Wednesday the 15th. And we were already set to close on the 17th that Friday. So I'm like, all right, let me rerun the numbers just to make sure and make my calls. So I hang up. I call my foundation guy. And as a strength coach, one of the clients I train, her husband is a plumber. So I use a lifeline right there. And I'm like, I called her up, got her husband's number and made basically like an emergency meeting at this house within an hour. We did another walkthrough. The plumber looked at everything. And when it was all said and done, the what came from inspection added another like 2000 to my uh, renovation budget. And I was like, Oh, this is awesome. Let's go. So <laughs> yeah. I called my agent, like, send me the papers. Let's close on this. Um, I I'm good to go. So she's like, great. Send me the papers. We start working and closing. The title company called me Friday when we were set to close. And they go, hey, we couldn't file the papers today because the um, courthouses and everything, they were just at hours. And they didn't find out about it till Friday. She's like, so we got to push it to Monday. So I'm like, okay, fine. Like as long as we close, no big deal. Well, that Sunday, our governor came on and basically was just like, we're shutting the whole state down, only essential people. And I'm sitting there like, I'm supposed to close on this house tomorrow. This may actually fall through. I'm not going to get this deal. I'm starting to get aggravated. So my wife, Carly, we both start looking up and he referenced the Homeland Security Act that they're going to follow. We literally looked up the Homeland Security Act of who are the essential employees, who's yeah. going to be working, who's not going to be working. And we see title companies, blah, blah, blah. They're essential. And I'm just like, look, I'm like, all right, awesome. We can do this. And Did sure you enough, ever have any fear in your mind, though, like with everything that was going on, like going not, through with you? Not really. Um, just because it's the house was getting paid in cash. And I knew worst case scenario, I would just sit on it. And, right. you know, I, I don't have any payments besides the interest for the HELOC. And I, I knew that I could just wait it out, and especially with the deal that I got on it. Like I knew I had plenty of wiggle room with this because um, originally it was going to be a, a burr and I was probably going to have to leave like three, four thousand dollars. But now getting it at 20, I'm like, OK, my Jeremy, what um, you know, earlier you said that your the sellers were overseas. Where were they overseas? Do you know where they were? That I do not know. I didn't get that information, but 
basically when my agent called me, she's like, yeah, with everything going on, they just want to get out of it and they're done with the house. I'm like, I'm wondering if they were in a position where they had to sell. And you know, that's probably why you got it for 20 grand. I mean, that's an amazing story. You're going to be able to burn all your money out, maybe even some more pay off your line of credit, which I'm assuming your game plan is going to be, you're going to have a crush deal. You have no money in the deal and you're going to have cash flow month after month after month after you're done fixing it. That's, that's and awesome. That shows that's like the that perfect it scenario. Doesn't, it doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. You know, if you wouldn't have asked, then you never would have gotten it. Always deal. ask. And my, agent, no. and my agent said, she kind of like said it passively and thank God she just like threw it out there um, because I would have been out of that contract. But yeah, I just, you always ask the questions and I mean, with all everything that I've been reading from bigger pockets, it's always ask why or always, the worst thing they can do is say no. So just yeah, absolutely. Why, I'm all about the why. I'm always yeah. about the why. Yeah. It's not like they're going to hunt you down or anything like that. It's just, yeah. just ask the question as to why If they say no. Okay. Why? And if yeah. they don't budge on your number or if they easily say, yeah, we'll take that. You have wiggle room. Keep working it down. Um, yeah. Cool. That, Jeremy, that's that's amazing. That's a great story of persevering. It sounds like you had to hit a lot of little bumps there. Um, sounds like you're doing you're going to do you're going to do great. You're going to crush it. Tell us what the ARV is going to be. Um, how do you feel like the rehab is going to go? Uh, and then talk to us a little bit about tenants. So right now, the ARV it was looking conservatively at 75. Um, and that, you know, I always low ball it. I was like, all right, I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, it's a hundred thousand dollar house. No, it's, it's, let's say conservatively 75. Um, the renovation budget, I was looking at about 30 and originally me being working full time with the school, um, it was mainly going to be contracted out. Um, but now we don't have school, you know, I'm still getting paid. Luckily. Um, I have all this time now where I'm, I'm handy. I, I can do during the summers. I do a lot of handy work around the community. So YouTube's great. <laughs> um, everything you can kind of YouTube and how to do it yourself. So my renovation budget just came down a little bit more because I'm going to be able to do a little, a lot of it myself. Um, and then rents in the area are conservatively 850 and up. So I should be able to get it fully rehab 900 to 950, but how I say the with, rehab will take you. Uh, it'll take me, no more than two months. Yeah. Um, basically, the big chunk of it, I'll be able to get done in the next three weeks. Um, but I'm getting full, all new replacement windows. So that's going to be, they estimate a four or six weeks. So I'm looking at no more than six weeks. I should be in there um, and all renovated and good to go. This coronavirus quarantine kind of came as a positive to you that yeah. you have this time now to rehab over the next couple months. And, yeah. you know, in your own private rehab, you're still pretty much quarantined, you know. It's I, have a, I, have a, I have a few months. Um, but... My wife, she's seven months pregnant. Um, so got a little bit of time before the baby comes. Yeah. <laughs> we have about yeah. 40 days. So I'm going to crunch away for the next 30 until <laughs> our, our little girl comes. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, are you worried about finding tenants at all? Or are you, how's the market they're looking for you? Are you, or is there any, um, any concern there? I'm not, I'm not too concerned with that. Um, my plan was to start kind of, you know, take a, take the front picture of the house and kind of get it out there and start getting feelers of getting applications rolling, still listing it. I know some people are like, don't do it till it's fully rehab, but like I said, why not, why not list it? And maybe I'll get a tenant and say, Hey, Come into market in you know five weeks or this date, um, fully rehabbed home with and list what I'm doing, and maybe I'll get some hits off it. But worst case scenario, you know I don't, and they want to see the inside and wait till it's done. Um, so like I said, I'm not I'm not overly concerned um, with finding a tenant. I know it'll happen. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, and we have a comment here from Nathan on Facebook. He says you should go back to the sellers and ask them <laughs> if they have any other deals they are trying to sell. And that is Not a great a bad point. idea. I always say the same and, thing. <laughs> and go ahead and post them in the Rookie Real Estate Facebook private group so some of us can get some of that bread, man. That's amazing. I want a twenty thousand dollars house that I can rehab. <laughs> I'll talk to my agent after this. Actually, that was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would definitely go back. That's that's I that's thought, pretty interesting. On Instagram, someone bought like a bunch of uh, plumbing materials and stuff mm -hmm. off Facebook Marketplace. And they said, oh, yeah, it's an investor. He owns 60 plus units. He's selling. 
you know, his portfolio, getting rid of his inventory. And I'm like, you got to ask, <laughs> are yeah. you selling those properties? Who are you selling them to? Can I buy some? No Don't worry about the plumbing stuff. Where's the house at? Yeah. <laughs> what do you worry about the plumbing very stuff? Fortunate, very fortunate too with like my renovation. Uh, my wife's family, they own a um, online liquidation auction company. So they get pallets of flooring, vanities, toilets. So I'm just like, they're like, yeah, go grab whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and just nice. share a cost of that helps as well with the uh the rehab yeah. so what would be one tip you could give our listeners today about uh you know your situation and you know the coronavirus and everything that's going on now do you have like one piece of advice you could give everyone listening if you're not over leveraged and the, the numbers work go for it um especially if you have the ability to kind of sit on and wait it out definitely pull the trigger but you know like like i said don't be just because of this going on don't be afraid to go out and still look at deals make offers uh, make your low offers and, and keep keep whittling that number down. Uh, but if the numbers make sense and you can sit on it, you're not over leveraged, go after it. Why not? That's that's awesome, Jeremy. Thank you uh, for what you're doing uh, in education. Before we before we get on to the next verse, I just want to say thank you. Um, I have a little brother who is special need classes and he talks about um, you know being outside all the time. He hates the classroom, but loves being outside <laughs> with his PE coach. And, and, and so thank you for what you're doing, Jeremy. You're doing awesome. Keep crushing it in real estate. Um, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, we'll see you next time. But for now, we're going to bring yes. in Kristen <laughs> as it's low. Hey, Hi, Kristen. Kristen. I'm so excited. I stalk yeah. you guys almost every day. <laughs> I'm proud of you. We're happy to talk with you today. We're excited. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit about uh, what you have going oh, on in real estate right now? Okay. Um, this particular house has been sitting there for five years, and I was able to get the house from a wholesaler. It's 1,300 square feet. I mean, the neighborhood is right next to a high school, which is not too bad. And it is in a floodplain. However, it doesn't flood, you know, as bad or anything. So it's a lot of people that's renting in that neighborhood, a lot of student rentals. There are some, you know, regular rentals, even some Section 8 in a nice neighborhood. The price is not bad. So, so um, where did, tell where did us you about... meet the where did you meet the wholesaler? And uh, tell us a little bit about the property, the numbers, and, uh, you know, go through the deal. Okay. Um. Well, on Facebook Marketplace, I kept this person posting um this deal keep posting this deal it was a nice deal too the numbers were like he had under contract for forty thousand dollars and the arv was around one six one hundred sixteen thousand five hundred the most i've seen so it was like around one hundred forty thousand with it being one hundred forty thousand with less renovation and this would be a full gut renovation to be around fifty thousand okay it's not that bad i had the money to purchase it myself but um, I'm still going to buy the house, though, regardless, because this is a good deal. I can sit on it until you know, um, an actual lender to go for it. Yeah. So what happened with that lending? Um, and was it private lender or a bank lender? It was a hard money lender. First, he said, um, we need the money for. And the reason why it could be for just for the renovation, because he wasn't sure about his money due to the whole coronavirus. So I said, OK, then, yeah, they just lend me the money for the renovation. And I, yeah. As of yesterday, he decided not to go for it because... He said he wow. found out the house was a floodplain, and he said due to the fact he doesn't know what's going to happen, he's going to go ahead and just fall back on this one. My attorney asked if I still wanted to go through the deal, and I said, yes, I still have the money. I'm going to go ahead and buy the, the house. I'll just have to just look around for someone to you know, help, uh, but I'm still going to buy the house. So what steps are you taking now to find someone to help out with those uh, renovation costs? I feel like a lot of private money lenders are are doing the same thing. They might be a bit skittish to invest right now until they find out what's going to happen with the economy. Well, um, I'm probably going to market it. I am a part of a, a, a local RIA. So mm -hmm. I'll come know that I just need renovation and I'm willing to give them a, above average of the return. I do 10% usually. So I'll just see if they would like to um, then you know, about 6000 for the renovations, and then they'll get their money back, and then $6,000. The thing about <laughs> private lenders, as a real estate rule, it's hard to find legit private lenders. So that's been tough. That I've noticed that, too. That, that's been kind of tough for me. I mean, I'm going to just keep on marketing it. I'm still going to get the house, though, regardless. And I have a cousin who's a contractor, so he'll be able to help out whenever he can. Or if I'm not able to get him, then I'll get my other contract, other options, so... 
Kristen, you sound like a you sound like a go getter. It sounds like you're you don't care what the obstacle is. It looks like you're gonna just bust right through it. And I mean, that's the kind of attitude you got to have to be successful in this game. So I'm really excited to see the outcome of this. Please come back and post it in the Facebook group, in the Real Estate Rookie Facebook group. We'd love to see the outcome of that. Um, do you have any worries about tenants or anything post renovation and any of that? Or what are you thinking? No, I don't because the plan was like hopefully after the Airbnb. <clears throat> and then possibly get um, higher property management to find tenants. So I will allow them to find a tenant for me. Like I do have, you know, I do have a regular full-time. I have other side hustle jobs, side real estate investing. So it would be more easier to just hire a property manager to find the tenants. And if, if they can't find a tenant, then I can easily just get Section 8. Come on in. That's awesome. Yeah, we're really excited for you. <laughs> Um, do you think that there's going to be anything strictly from the coronavirus that's, you know, going to affect you directly? And what advice do you have uh, for everyone going forward that's, you know, trying to look for their first deal right now or maybe waiting to close on a deal? Here's the, here's the thing. I'm going to be honest. Start about the whole coronavirus <laughs> pandemic when it comes to real estate, because people, they still need a place to stay, regardless of what where you are right now. So I don't even I don't maybe because I'm still new, but I don't see the, the whole big deal of, about people being so scared about real estate investing unless you're just over leveraging. Now you over leveraging, right. that's on you. I don't see uh it affecting me at all. I'm pretty sure I can get somebody in there. I mean, I, I don't know too many people who want to be home. Yeah. I don't. I really like Kristen's attitude. Kristen, I really, I really, I, I really know. enjoy your, your, your feedback, your, your, I mean, your energy. I think you're, I think you're going to go far in real estate, girl. You have this go getter attitude, this, and you're smart about it. You're like, I don't want to be over leveraged. You know, I want to make sure that it's something that I can do. You're, you know, that people need a place to stay, right? Heads and beds is the name of the game. So, I love that attitude and that's exactly what you need to win in this game. You're not skittish. You know you're going to do well. Um, you're not scared of a rehab during this pandemic and, and good for you, girl. Out there crushing it. I'm, I'm really proud of you. I'm excited to see what uh, comes out of this one. Please post it. We'd love to follow up. Yeah, great job. I that you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Man, she was really, I, I really enjoyed her. Like someone like that's like a refresh, like, like just not scared ready to rock right. and roll just the energy I mean, and just geez. this didn't work so i'm gonna do it this way <laughs> love <laughs> That's it the attitude love it, love to it. have and i loved how she sat and this is why I, every time we talk to guests i love hearing their opinion on things and how she said yeah. people don't want to be homeless people are still gonna need homes and i thought that that was a great point i think she's gonna crush someone wrote felipe hope you're okay just checking in i got something in my throat <laughs> halfway through that i'm like sitting here dying i'm like what the heck i got something in my throat. so that was funny i love then these there's lives me they're on so the other real. side just wanting to push your mute button <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right so before we get to Raphael, we actually have a question here any opinion on buying a house hack during this um epidemic uh what do you think ashley <clears throat> i think that's the best strategy right now, honestly, because as long as you uh, by yourself could afford the mortgage payment and, you know, your property taxes, insurance, you can afford that on your own. And then you still house hack and that is just the cherry on top. That's just extra money coming in. So I think house hacking is a very safe strategy right now. If you are not over leveraged and you can still afford that payment, if you can't find roommates or rent your other unit, I, th I think that's a safe strategy to go. What do you think, Felipe? I agree 100%. House hacking right now is probably king on the rental property side of real estate. Not mm -hmm. speaking about flipping or, you know, wholesaling or any of this. I think when we're talking about buying hold like Airbnb and renting traditionally and all these other ways to do it, I think house hacking right now is king because even if you lose one tenant, you still have three others or two others or whatever the case may be. Plus you're living for free. So you're able to deploy your finances in other ways. You don't have the stress of, oh my gosh, I got to make my mortgage payment. You have two or three other people who are in the house together as well. <clears throat> I almost see it. You get it. to quarantine together. <laughs> oh my gosh. I almost see it. And make sure you have your little Purell bottle right there as they walk in, <laughs> like making sure everyone's sanitized. Does uh, it so yeah, I think them? <laughs> <laughs> Before they walk in. That's hilarious. Yeah, I think house hacking is, is, is probably one of the best things you can do right now. As long as, like, like Ashley said, that you know that you can pay the mortgage by yourself. You're not over leveraged. Um, your tenants that are in there are uh, the cherry on top. So, yeah, I love that. So let's bring in um, Mr. Rafael. How you doing, brother? Good, good. So where really are you here. from? I'm from Colorado here. Oh, okay. Here. Is that where you're investing in right now? 
Yes, yes, yes. Yeah? Denver, okay, Colorado. so tell us a little bit about what you have going on. Okay, so a little bit of background on myself. I have two rentals, um, and I was getting into right now, ever since February, into what was going to be a fix and flip. Um, but um, because of, I don't know, the certainty of the market, um, I think I'm going to, I would actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to hold it. So I'm going to rent it out. Good okay. for you. Now, did awesome. you think of that strategy before you got the property or are you kind of doing a pivot and going from there? Yeah, I'm actually, it's actually an ex exit strategy that I thought of. Um, Good for you. Uh, just because, just because I, I don't know what the ARV may be or if the, you know, the price drops or anything like that. Uh, so renting it out would actually give me a pretty good cash flow. That's awesome. When we had on the show a couple of weeks ago, we had Steve and Joe on and they talked about having two exit strategies. So that's great that, you know, you're al you're already doing that before you even have your deal in place. That's awesome. Um, and how many deals have you done uh, before this one? Uh, so I have two rentals and this was going to be my first fix and flip, but now it's going to be my third rental. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Do you plan on flipping the property after this whole pandemic, maybe selling it off, getting some money out or what's your plan post pandemic? Oh, okay. Um, so yes, I do think of it. Uh, I was actually deciding whether I want to do a six month lease with tenants or month to month uh, or maybe a year. So I would think probably next summer is when I want to get rid of it. Oh, okay. Any reasoning for that? Or you just think that would be uh, a long enough time for all Yeah, long enough with? time. Honestly, I'm kind of deciding still uh, just because it's going to cash flow pretty good. So I might keep it, to be honest. Uh, and then because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a burr and then get the money out and then get into a flip eventually. That's hilarious. You're going to end up keeping it, bro. I've, I've regretted every property <laughs> that I sold. Even the flip that I had, I know right now would have been cash flowing, you know, pretty well. So any property that I've ever sold, I've regretted. I've loved, I love the hunt. I love the deal. And then it's like I'm married to that property and I'm just giving it away. Like I end up like wanting to keep it as long as the cash flow is working. What I end up doing is getting a line of credit on a property if I want my money back. I just get a line of credit out, use it again. The, the rent pays off the line of credit. But there's a bunch of strategies, man. So that's that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> the property that you're that you're going to be renting, when, do you, when are you going to finish? What do the numbers look like? Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so I got actually through a wholesaler uh, with a $10,000 non-refundable um, earnest money. So that is oh. one of the reasons why I kept going with the property, right. even yeah. though gonna, it wasn't going to be a fixed and flip. Out. Exactly, yeah. So I was, it was either say bye-bye to my 10000 or move forward and, you know, come up with an exit strategy. So actually, the, the way that I got this one as a wholesaler, um, it was kind of first come, first serve. Um, so I got a buddy, a contractor, went to look at the property. I didn't even look at the property at all. And then on the spot, we put the $10,000 down. It was a good spread for a flip. Um, and then uh, then at two weeks after, I went for the appraisal and I actually looked at the property. And I was like, wow, this has a mother-in-law in the basement, has its own entrance. This will be a great rental. But my head was still on the flip. You know, I was still thinking flip, flip, flip. I got to do that. And then the coronavirus happens. So then I'm like, okay, okay, I'm reaching out to a few people that know. Actually, Steven was one of the people that I, I also reached out to on Facebook. Um, and I was like, what should I do? Everybody's like, exit strategy, you know, try to get, you know, a, a rental, make it a rental. So that's like exact, exactly what I did. So I decided to just go ahead and do that. But I was going to purchase the property with the Harmony lender. And then they eventually, halfway through the deal, they backed out. They were like, no, we're not going to do that. We're only going to do like 50% LTV, which was like not not what I wanted to do. So I ended up did finding someone out? else. Did they back out because of coronavirus and what's happening? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, the broker that I was talking to said that the CEO was not really doing anymore. They were making you, you know, put more money down and not really going to finance you on the uh, rehab. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to pay the rehab myself. And I found another uh, Harmony lender that I could use. So I'm closing on the 3rd of uh, April. Okay, I love cool. that you grinded through it. I know that 10,000 was a big motivation, right? To like not back out of the deal. <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> even without the 10,000, let's say that it was only a thousand dollar earnest money. You know, I would challenge you to do that throughout your career, man. Like continue to grind through obstacles because you're going to get a lot of those. You're going to get a lot of obstacles. I mean, Every single property that I've purchased, even to this day, man, have had obstacles up until closing. Like I've never per se had a 
perfect closing, nothing going on, right? So I've always had to persist through it. Even at my closing company, my sister works there. And she's always like, oh my gosh, another Felipe property. Here we go. Like we got every single thing. There's always something, man. So I'm just proud of you for grinding through it, man. Le tenemos que seguir echando ganas. So I think that's awesome. So once you close, uh, what's the plan? Are you going to start right away on the rehab? Do you think you'll be able to find contractors? Yeah, so the rehab, I actually had a my, my friend that is a contractor. He's going to help me out. The rehab is only going to be 20000 maybe 25 you know, worst of scenario. I actually called my pro- project uh, property management for my other uh, properties, and I was like, hey, how, how much can I get rent here? And then so the mortgage is going to be about 1700 1800 and for each floor because it's it's going to have two bedroom one one bathroom on the first floor and two bedroom one bathroom on the basement it actually has a kitchen in the basement as well um right. so I, i'll be able to collect uh, she said 1600 each so it's wow. going to be about 3200 and mortgage is going to be about 17 1800 so it's going to cash flow at least 900 thousand wow, dollars and is the mother-in-law awesome. suite the one downstairs yes correct yes so that will be your house. mortgage after you refinance, correct? Correct. Yeah, after I refinance. Yeah, that, that's a goal to refinance. As soon as I get a rehab, I refinance it with 30 year and it should be good. And how long do you think it's going to take for you to rehab it and get it refinanced and rent it out? It's going to be quick, actually. Uh, yeah. the guy told me three weeks because everything wow. like the basement is already set up. People are actually using it uh, uh, as a as a rental in the past. So there was a person living on the top and a person living on the bottom. So it just needs paint, a little touch up and it should be good. Are you worried about um, contractors not being able to work at all? I know in New York State, where I'm from, we've had they put a hold on non-essential uh, construction <clears throat> projects. So I actually had someone staying in my Airbnb and they had to postpone it a month because their house was getting remodeled. But now the contractor can't work because of this new rule. Um, Do you have any fear that that might take place in Colorado? No, I don't. I mean, I'm a little bit. um, So I think he should be able to go in in there and do it right away. But I I I made actually calculated everything to like a four or five month. So, uh, oh, enough, so you have enough time. money, yeah. In case, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I calculated all that on my cost because I was like, you know, uh, worst of scenario, four to five months added up, or like I saw the interest for the hard money lender. So I calculated all that, and that should be good. Are you worried about Great, uh, awesome. tenants at all, Rafael? Are you worried about finding the right tenants, or kind of what's your strategy uh, regarding that? Let's say you do finish in three weeks. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so I talked to my uh, property management uh, company and they, they're still getting people renting out. Like ex- uh, I actually nice. bought my stack of rental in September and they were able to get someone in within two weeks. Now, a little, it's a little bit different now, but uh, I th- but they, they tell me they're still pretty busy. People are still looking for homes. They need a place to live. So I actually have a question here from someone on Facebook for you. OK, so it's from Dina. Hi, my first house hack with no tenant and the pandemic first mortgage due tomorrow. Stressed out, but I have my mortgage. Any ideas for next month? Tenant traffic is slow. Well, I wonder where that where that is, because uh, that might be in a different a different state. I don't know if they have a property management in place. I know that, that's usually who I use. Um, I don't I don't have too much experience with like the. Uh, you know, getting the uh, the lease and all that stuff. But I usually have someone else in my team that helps me out with all that. And I ask questions. I actually have three property managements, people that I ask questions for. And I actually and I ask them as well right now. They make sure that they're still employed. Uh, they ask them questions. Hey, are you going to, do you think you're going to lose hours later on in the next couple of weeks, month? Mm-hmm. Uh, so they ask all those questions. How did you find your property managers? I was actually in a in a in a group where um, where we just uh, meet every week from different uh, businesses, and we refer each other uh, referrals for our businesses that I was back in the day. So that- here we go, meetups, another common theme why yeah. everyone has to join a meetup. <laughs> we've heard we've heard meetups a hundred times, man, and I yeah, think we're gonna hear Kristen it over today. and over again. Kristen said the same yeah. thing. I think a lot of success comes from coming together and bouncing ideas off of each other. I might have a problem that you've already had a solution for and vice versa. So we're able to uh, jump back and forth. You know, I would tell, I can't remember who asked that question a minute ago, but I would tell them, you know, make sure you're using every avenue, Craigslist, Facebook, join groups, REIs. If you're out there doing everything you got to do to find tenants, you know, you're, you're going to find people that need a good place to stay and you're going to find quality tenants. So join REI meetings. Um, get together with other people that are doing the same thing that you're doing, like-minded people, and you're you're gonna find it, you know. And, and so I, I think that's awesome. Yep. Raphael, do you want to take one more question? Yeah, sure. 
Okay, this one is from Jake. It says, now seems like a good time to work on your own deals. Pay yourself as you would a contractor if you're handy. Okay, I guess it's not really a question, but do you want to at least comment on that? <laughs> yeah, so I was actually thinking about doing the paint myself. I, I painted like my bedroom back in the day, so I was going to take that job on onto this since I have, I have quite some time. So I might just lock myself in there, buy like a sleeping bag and right. spend a night yeah. do it again. Yeah. Next day. <laughs> just get it YouTube, done. man. YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, exactly. YouTube is like the new university. Yeah, that's what I told my husband. I said, if we are like shelter in place and can't leave, we're packing up and moving to one of my rehab units. <laughs> Backing up the kids and everybody. We're all going to get this thing done. Hey, we'll Raphael, like let, let me ask you Let me ask you the last question, man. Let's review those final numbers on, on your deal. Walk us through the deal real quick, the numbers, how everything is going to work out. So, yeah, so the purchase price was uh, 330 uh, And then based on the coronavirus, I went back to the wholesaler. I was like, hey, um, you know, is there any... <laughs> coronavirus discount per se or you know <laughs> you know what's going on right now so is there anything room that you can you know you can do something so he he lowered down to like fifteen thousand. so it was ended wow. up being 315 um which is still you know it's it's it, it's a little bit so it's gonna help me out and then i am uh spending twenty thousand in rehab and then i'm probably gonna do a burr so i'm gonna get i'm gonna rehab it and i'm gonna rent it out and then I'm gonna I'm gonna refinance it and get my money out pretty much because it's uh, the Good ARV deal. of this of this property is four thirty, so wow. that's about a hundred spread one hundred and ten. So yeah, I mean that's just the truth of of running your numbers during this time. And if the numbers work, um, you know one of my mentors told me, Felipe, if the numbers work, the the the, the economy it doesn't affect real estate if your numbers are you got a hundred thousand dollars spread, and your rehab is way under that, right? Your refinance. Is going to be great as long as you can get your money back out and then just redo redo it over and over and over again. You know, you're going to rent it out for thirty two hundred bucks. You're not going to sell it. You're going to want to keep that cash flow <laughs> for the tax purposes too, as well. On the flip, yeah. you know, you got to pay yeah. high taxes. I'm probably going to keep it for two years, to be honest. Just not paying taxes on it. Heck yeah, that's great. Do you have uh, one piece of advice you'd like to give everyone who's maybe thinking about? You know, maybe that this is their first time getting into a real estate deal. They've been looking and now they're kind of hesitant to actually get started. Do you have any advice for them? Uh, I have a couple. Uh, so just make a lot of connections, meetups, Facebook groups. I actually, um, I probably get 20 to 40 deals through wholesalers, through my phone, all over the United States. I just signed up at the beginning. I just want, I just want to check out all the deals, run yeah. numbers. I'm not going to yeah. buy all of them, but I hey, it's, and, and that's kind of how I got started. You know, I get, I probably get 10, 15 from California and I'm not even there, but I just like yeah. to look at it and all that. <laughs> that's awesome. um, practice. So, so yeah, that, that, that's probably one of the best, the best uh, things to do. And then also reach out to people. Uh, like I reached out to Steven, I reached out to Joe, like a bunch of people, uh, they responded to me, you know, what should I do on this, on this, on this thing, um, on this deal. And then most people were just like exit strategy is the way to go. Always yeah. have an exit strategy. That's great advice. Rafael, I love I love that yeah. you're killing it, man. I think that's awesome. I want to see you continue to grow, bro. Make sure that you're, you know, putting it in the Real Estate Rookie Facebook group, man. We want to see the outcome. We want to see some post oh, yeah. pictures. And if you're in your sleeping bag painting, bro, we got to see that one. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, Rafael. Thank thanks for coming out, man. Right, thank you guys. Thank Enjoyed you. having you, bro. Have good luck good with your rehab. He was cool. I I'm wondering if he would really do something like like have this. I can I just I'm a visual person, so I can see him like sleeping in his sleeping bag in the room, waking up, painting, going right back to sleep when he's done. I think that was funny. I can already see your wheels spinning as to something you could do similar to like that to post <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> I'm so gonna do that. That's hilarious. Okay, All right, so take this we one. have some questions for us now. Okay, this one is from Tristan. Hey guys, I recently bought my first house and paid cash for it. My plan was to be able to pull money out of it by either HELOC or refi. Now with all that's going on, it seems to be hard to get the credit and stuff. What's the way in your opinion to be able to get another property without needing to pay 20 to 25% down since it's classified as an investment property? Good question from Tristan Church. So I would uh, definitely explore the option of uh, HELOC or refi as much as possible. I would not just go on one bank or one lender or whatever. I would call many, many. I mean, if you call 10 to 15, you're going to get maybe not the answer you're looking for, but you're going to get more options. And that's always a good thing. So really, really, really stress the refi or the HELOC as much as possible so you don't have to put 20 to 25% down. 
And another thing that I would be doing as well is if you're going to be buying an investment property during this time, think things right now are not business as usual. You can call banks. Everything is negotiable. If you have a property that makes sense, that the, the lease is going to be great, going to have good tenants, you know the numbers work and you take it to a bank. I've seen banks drop that 20, 25%. Um, one of my flips that I did in uh, Cookville, Tennessee, the bank let me down to 15%. So 20 to 25% is just, it's not, nothing's a law. I mean, you can take your different options to the bank and say, hey, look, what if I do this, this and this, and we do this option? I mean, be negotiable, take your plan, be ready. Don't go into a meeting and just see what they tell you. Go into a meeting prepared, be negotiable. You know, you don't have to always put 20% down. Um, look for a hard money lender that might be able to help you. Um, so those are kind of the things, some of the things that I would be doing. And, and I'm a big believer in if you have a deal, the numbers work, the money is going to be there. Like it's not impossible. You're going to make it work. Push through that. I also think that you should... I think it's important to focus on the strategy of refining or getting a HELOC because I think you'll have a better chance at that right now than doing a new purchase, especially since you own that property already in cash. I think it might be um, a better outlet for you. I would go to small local banks, credit unions, and like Felipe said, talk with them. There are there are people out there still lending. I'm have a loan I got called today that I got commitment last week and I got the call today that the appraisal is getting started. So there definitely are banks that are still lending out there, um, even and this was on an investment property. So I would say, you know, still keep looking out there. It's all about relationships. I had a really interesting call yesterday and I'll let you take the next question, Ashley, but I had a really um, interesting question or a phone call the other day. My bank called me and was like, Hey, Philippe, thanks for referring, you know, cause I refer all business to my bank that needs loans or whatever. And they said, right now we're not going to be doing uh, business with people we don't have relationships with. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's even like, <laughs> I know she didn't email it to me, but she called yeah. me and she was like, no offense to anyone you're sending. Thanks for the people you have been sending. But right now we're doing business with relationship clients. And I was like, I had something interesting. similar. Did you? I reached out to a bank that was referred to me and they actually yeah. said that um, the property I had was out of market and oh. they're only lending in their market. And usually they will make exceptions, but um, they're, they're not currently. They're basically doing relationship only. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So our next question is from Jake Rogers. Yeah. Is there a way to refinance a property without a full-time job? Ha ha. <laughs> so ha. I, my, I'll, I'll give it like a quick, easy answer. Yeah. My sister, she, when she graduated college, she was 20 and she had a part-time job and got a mortgage, an FHA loan for a duplex. So I don't for a part-time job, yes, but it, her part-time job was still W-2. So I don't know if maybe that's more what you mean uh, by your question, because that is a lot harder to get a loan without W-2 income. If you're self-employed, you can definitely get it, but you want two years of tax returns. I found most banks want some, maybe even three, especially on the commercial side. Uh, the two commercial loans I did the past uh, in the two months, there's they both wanted three years of tax returns, not two. I think um, it always think goes back to relationships, Ashley. Um, my bank that I used prior to the one I'm using now, and maybe I should be shopping around for more banks because I'm really, I'm really just using one bank right now, but maybe I should have a couple more. But <clears throat> my bank prior to this that I used out in Cookville uh, allowed me to refi with leases in place that were signed for a year. So as long as I had leases that were signed for a year and I was in good standing with my mortgage payment, like they were willing to look at other things for the refinance versus just my W-2 job versus, or, or just my self-employment. Cause I've always been self-employed since I graduated high school. Um, so I've, I've been able to use that. I've always had to find ways to get creative because I've never had, well, I've had a W-2 job, but just not long. Um, and a lot of banks are like, well, <clears throat> we know you don't have that history, so let's look at your leases. Do you have good standing? And, you know, history and relationships was that, a lot. Was that on the commercial side or residential side? It long? was a four-unit apartment. It was a six-unit small apartment complex. So it was a quadplex and a duplex. Um, they were separate buildings, so they were able – but because they were on one, it no, wasn't commercial. No, the loan was the – Oh, it was a commercial. Oh, the loan was yeah. commercial. Okay, yeah. Yep. That was going to say that has more flexibility if you go mm. on the commercial side than the residential side. Right. So that is a great point, Felipe. They'll look at the leases and, you know, what 
what profit is that building going to give you? And we'll be able to cover the mortgage. Awesome. You want to take the next question? Let's do it. Aaron Anderson. Oh, I love the picture of him and his son. I think the, the glasses, that's a really cool picture. <laughs> the sunglasses. Aaron Anderson says, I keep hearing success stories from people using wholesalers. Where is the best place to find wholesalers? I'm in Washington, but open to investing anywhere. Man, so you go to this, there's this website. It's like a Walmart <laughs> for wholesalers and you just pick them off the shelf. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I can go first on this one. I think to yeah. find really good wholesalers is connections. I sound like a broken record. REI meetings. You go to meetings where 10 people have used the same wholesaler and had success with him or her, then then that's who you use. You you don't I would not Google wholesalers in Washington. Like that, that's just not how I would do it. I would look for just like I find good plumbers, I ask for references, just like I find good partners, I look for references. Just like I would find good wholesalers, I look for references, people that have used this wholesaler strategically in the past and have had good outcomes with them, then that's why I use even if I have to pay a little more on points to get that money, as long as they have a good rapport or a good business standing within the REI community where I'm going to invest, I will use that wholesaler. Ashley, what about you? Yeah, I agree with that. Referrals are definitely king on this topic, but what you can do too is you can post on social media. And that's how I've connected with a couple wholesalers. They actually just messaged me and said, hey, we know you're from Buffalo. We wholesale in Buffalo. Would you like to be on our buyers list? And I said, yes. So now I get emails from them. Uh, so you could go ahead and, you know, put it out there on social media that you're or in different uh, Facebook groups even. Hey, anyone, you know, know wholesalers or uh, is anyone a wholesaler? I want to be on your buyers list. And then you can run the numbers on the deal yourself. You know, you could get to go look at the property. The emails I get have pictures, um, you know, the, the rehab numbers you want to come up with. You don't want your wholesaler to tell you the whole the rehab numbers anyways. So, nope. you know, you, they'll tell you, you know, what their purchase price is, what they're asking, um, what the wholesale fee is. And then you go and look at the property and you look at the neighborhood. And I haven't bought one yet, but I still get excited when I see the email <laughs> and I get to run numbers on a deal. So I would suggest trying to do it that way too. And then you can always ask them for references. Hey, do you have uh, some buyers that you worked with that I could talk to um, about you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just like a contractor, you're going to ask a contractor for you know pictures and, and good customers that they've served or, or that have been served. You you do the same thing, I think, with wholesalers. You treat them just as yeah. another team member of part of your business and you make sure that they are uh, who they say they are and not just, you know, some person that wants to screw you over or whatever. So make sure you do your due right. diligence with that. Okay. You ready to wrap it up? I'm getting sick of talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap it, it up, more, Ashley. It was more fun when we had the guest on. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, Ashley no, hates me, y'all. I'm kidding. I just like to Lessons heart bottom. that we learned today. <laughs> what do you got, Ashley? What have we learned today? Okay. Number one thing I'm going to say is exit strategies. So important. Oh, I thought you were we going to say REI that. meetings. <laughs> You're all about I did them. write that down to say on my list, but I wrote exit strategies first. So. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay, so exit strategies have at least two of them. So, it, you know, whether you're going to rent it out, you're going to sell it, those two right there, you know, simple, easy ones. Or maybe even, you will know, wholesale it. Who knows? But very important to have two strategies. Maybe you'll even have the opportunity you could turn it into a house hack or you can just rent it out altogether. Um, what do you, what do you think about exit strategies? Yeah, I like that. Uh, I think that's really smart, uh, to make sure that you have two exit strategies right now when you're purchasing properties, you know, a year ago, things might've been a little different. You buy a flip, you sell the flip, move on. Right. I think that that would have, that was cool. But I think right now is a time to pivot a little and uh, make sure that you have two exit strategies when purchasing a property, whether it's going to be renting or refinancing or flipping and holding or, you know, two complete separate and the numbers have to work from both. Um, Dr. Joe, I think, taught us that on the last episode. So mm -hmm. I think that was really good. Um, I think um, one of the things that I learned for sure, uh, and we talk about it all the time, REI meetings are really important, but shop, when you shop around or when you're going to get a lender, shop around. Look for, um, you know, people that have used that lender. You know, ask people how the experience went, what it looked like. Are they uh, who they are? You going to close, you know, where was the closing process? smooth with this lender, you know, so shop around for lenders, make sure you get plenty of references, treat them as another part of your team. And even That's lenders, you can just Google too. So, yeah. okay, Google, because you're just going to call them and you're going to 
get you want a term sheet from them that will show, you know, what your interest rate would be, what your, you know, amortization is, how many years of payments you have. Um, I think that's something you can actually Google, you know, it's maybe not like a private or hard money lender, but a, a bank you could because you're just going to call them and you're going to ask them the same questions that you would any other bank. So I think um, looking for small banks in your area, trying new ones, um, that's a great idea. Shop around. And then what else did we learn today? Um, concessions from sellers, uh, negotiating purchase prices. Ask for, what did he ask for? Like $13,000 off after $20,000 <laughs> yeah. is what he got it down to. I think that's awesome. Yeah. He, the he, original asking price is 45000 I think. He got and it down then to 20000 20, Yeah. Killed it. Like a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm going to do that from now on. I'm just going to do embarrassing offers and see what happens right now during the COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of the one of the things that uh, I think a lot of a lot of the investors that we just talked to have in common is that real estate is essential, right? Real estate is something. It's it's. I don't want to say it's as, as essential as food and water, but it's pretty close. I mean, people need a roof over their head, and mm-hmm. as real estate investors, we can provide that, right? We are putting, uh, you know, heads in beds, and that's really that's really important. I mean, you know, people need a, a yeah, place. Yeah, shelter to- is an essential. Yep. There you go. And we're providing that. So I think if you have the resources to be able to provide that, go for it um, and continue to push forward with real estate. It is an essential need right now. And if you guys have concerns this week about a deal that you're going through, Felipe and I are going to be very active in the Facebook group this week, asking or you're answering your guys' questions. Um, we want to help you guys get through this as much as we can. Um, if you have tenants you're worried about not paying, um, Felipe, you made that YouTube video, um, gave great advice. You guys can find that um, on Bigger Pockets YouTube. But uh, we're here for you guys and we want to help you guys because you guys help us too. Um, we love reading your responses and your recommendations in the Facebook uh, group. So if you want to, if you're not in the group already, you can join it. Um, just search Real Estate Rookie on Facebook. Absolutely. Well, Ashley, I never get tired of talking to you. I would love to stay on here forever <laughs> and ever. Um, but <laughs> I I'll love look talking to, to you. I'll to your call right after this. <laughs> oh, I will. Hey, Ashley, what was that? <laughs> Well, I'm glad we got to jump on here. Um, So bye, everyone. Thank you to Jeremy and Kristen and Raphael for being on the show today. Uh, We had a lot of fun. Okay, goodbye.